It's good to see you this morning. I'm glad if you're a guest with us today, it's good to see you. I'm glad that you're in the house of God with us today. A lot of going on in the world right now with the hurricane in Louisiana and how it's affecting the coast. We need to pray for that. Uh, we understand that the tragedy that's happened the past few days in our own neighborhood, in our own backyard, not 10 minutes from us, we need to make sure we pray and we seek the face of God and say, God, we want your work and your will done in those situations. And over and over again, we know that the trial and the struggle and the things are great all around us. But how many of you know Jesus said that we're more than conquerors? His word says that we are more than conquerors in him. We're not doing it within ourselves, but we are more than conquerors. Thank you so much for your tithe, for your giving, for what you've done. I realize more and more in our world today of how critical it is for us, for us to have an H3 center. For children, I had about four people contact me this week and say these words. Some in our church, some outside of our church. Pastor, could we do a night daycare? And I go, well, I don't know how to do that, but if God provides, we'll do whatever God tells us to do. We'll partner, we'll do whatever we have to do in those areas. And I'm not starting a daycare today, so nobody get nervous. I will just tell you that anything that we do in our lives right now, whatever God provides, we're willing to do what God wants us to do. With building the H3 Center, with our Hispanic campus in Colquitt, with the things that are happening right now, every ministry is growing. UGC1 is happening today. We have about four or five families that are going to go through UGC 101 today and become part, a greater part in what God's calling us to do here. So in everything that we're doing, our outreach the end of this month, make sure you bring your candies and all those kind of things, and we'll do whatever we can to reach one more person with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do we realize how critical it is to reach one more person with the gospel? Because if we reach that mom and dad, we can change a whole family. If we can reach that child, the child by her testimony is going to reach her parents in Jesus' name. So we're believing that's going to happen every single day. And thank you for being a part of that. And thank you for everything that you're doing. I want you to go with me to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Verse 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. I'm still thanking God for the eight people that made a public confession of faith. Can somebody say praise the Lord? We should always praise the Lord. Don't ever take baptism for granted. It's when somebody's going public with their faith and saying, I've decided to follow Jesus. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And let me just stop there, and I said it last week, I'll say it again this week. There is only one way to heaven, and the way is Jesus Christ. There's not multiple ways to heaven, and the way is narrow. It's very specific. It doesn't mean it's exclusive. It means it's specific. And what I mean by exclusive there is that you have to have this much money, or you've got to be in this kind of community, or you've got to have these things. But when Jesus said there is a way, he is the way. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ washes away all your sins. How many of you are, are glad the old man is not in control anymore? <laughs> We have been given the Spirit of God within us to do what God has called us to do. So anything that we face in life, we are more than conquerors because we have Jesus Christ within us. Now notice this, and I'm going to challenge some of you this morning. I'm going to challenge you with everything in you because a lot of times, a lot of people will say these words, well, I'm saved and I'm okay 
and, and, and all these things is going to happen, and, and we're kind of like the psychology book of the 70s. I'm okay, you're okay, we're all okay. But how many of you know without Christ, we're not okay? And as long as we live in this world, there is going to be challenges, there is going to be conflicts, there is going to be the weird uncle, there is going to be somebody in your family there's going to be somebody that you work with, somebody that you're in class with, that you struggle with. And so, yes, he saved you, but he saved you for a purpose. He didn't save you to just sit on a pew on Sunday from 9 to 10.15 and just go through the motions. He didn't save you for Christmas and Easter. He didn't save you just for those things. He saved you that the place that you're working in right now, that you can be salt and light in a city set up on a hill that cannot be hid. He put you in the family that you're in right now for a divine reason, and he put you together for such a time as this. Some You may be saying, I would have been, done so much better to be born in 1920 and live in 1920, but God knit you together in your mother's womb for such a time as this to come into the kingdom of God, and it's not, and let me just say this for somebody today, it's not too much for you in Christ. It's not too much. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fold, and I'm gonna wilt, and I'm gonna, like, you know, get enough ammo and enough guns in my house just to make it until Jesus comes back. That's the South Georgia version. I, I'm just going to hang on until he comes. No, no, no. Jesus never meant for us just to hang on until he comes. Jesus never meant for us just to occupy space until he comes. Jesus didn't even mean for us to just show up at church until he comes. Jesus didn't mean for us to do, Jesus meant, and, and I want you to see this, Jesus meant for us to have a divine purpose that when we walked into the room, the atmosphere changes. Jesus put us for such a time as this, and I don't care where you are or what you're doing, that Jesus puts you in the college that you're in, the class that you're in, the job that you're in, the business that you're in. God orders the steps of those that are righteous. God orders your steps. And you say, well, I'm praying that God gets me out of this. And he may get you out of that job. And he may get you out of that bad relationship. But while I'm in it, I'm going to be salt and light in a city set up on a hill that cannot be hit. Now, I told you I was going to challenge you this morning. Everybody okay with that? Everybody get enough sleep last night? You won, so you're okay. All right? I'm okay, you're okay. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name... Okay, let's hang on. Everybody, everybody tracking with me this morning? I, I just want to make sure because I'm going to throw you in the deep end this morning. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Do you believe the Word of God this morning? Do you believe it's all good or none of it's good? Do you believe that it's all truth or none of it's truth? God's not a man that he should lie. He, he's not setting you up for failure. He, he is saying that in 2020, there are going to be demonic people 
around us. There are going to be people that have invited demonic spirits into their life for wealth, for the vilest pornography that you can even imagine. And let me go ahead and throw this one in there. And the spirit of religion that Jesus drove them out of the temple because he said, "Uh uh-uh, I'm I'm getting the demons out of here because my house shall be called a house of prayer. Because they let their traditions go over the word of God. And how many of you know when our traditions go over the word of God, we are open ourselves for the devil to put a foothold in our life that will literally steal and kill and destroy your joy, your peace, your love, and everything about it. So Jesus says that you in my name will be able to cast out demons. Now, why are we not operating in this power like we should be? One reason is we let demons into our circles. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this. Jesus, I know some of you are already saying, I've got all these lost friends, and I'm just like Jesus. I go and just kind of hang out with sinners. I'm trying to win them to the Lord. And you're three sheets in the wind while you're trying to win them to the Lord. I'm just trying to be a good example to them. Well, if you're a good example to them, bring them to church and have fellowship with them in church. See, we, we've kind of let demons come in our circles and we've allowed things into our life that should not be there. And we should be casting out demons, not entertaining de- demons and putting them in our circle. Some, just look at me and say, I'm okay. I'm okay. But see, if we're not careful right now, We start playing with things that we as children of God and we wonder why we don't have the power of God when there's an attack on our sons and daughters and on our families and our communities and it's because we've entertained demons and we're trying to cast out demons in ourselves. and they said, we don't know who you are. We, We don't know who you are. Paul, we know. Apollos, we know. Jesus, we know. But we don't know who you are. And so you cannot entertain demons in your life if you want to cast out demons. Yes, there's a way to do it. Yes, you don't have to have, this is not movie of the week, exorcism kind of deal. But we have authority in Jesus' name to say, in the name of Jesus, you get out of my house in Jesus' name. And the authority of God's Word says, I have the authority in Jesus' name that every time that that demons come and get me, I bind and rebuke that, and I think I'll take a moment right now. In the name of Jesus, we bind and rebuke every evil spirit that come against me, my family, and UGC in Jesus' name. Against our community in Jesus' name. We stand on the authority of God's Word, not because of who I am, but because of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Give Him praise in this place. Second thing he mentions here is he said, you'll speak with new tongues. Some people want to speak in tongues. But Proverbs 18.21 says, the power of life and death is in the tongue. And if you're speaking in death, if you're speaking in those things that you want, you'll never speak life. You need to speak to your marriage that we will live and not die. We will declare the works of God. (laughs) You need to speak to your children that says we will live and not die. We will declare the works of God. You need to speak to the things in your life right now that the enemy is trying to steal and kill and destroy and say in the name of Jesus, we will happen. It will happen in Jesus' name. I'm going to get to this third thing, and I'm not to my points yet, so hang on. This is just the introduction. Taking up servants. Some of y'all are like, I'm out. (laughs) Somebody's already looked at their neighbor and said, I told you they did that kind of stuff. (laughs) No, no, no. In Acts chapter 28, a serpent bit Paul. And he shook it back into the fire. 
they thought he was an evil man and was going to die. And then when he didn't die, they thought he was a god. Now, there's going to be some serpents that try to attach themselves to your life, to your marriage, and to your family. And you've got to shake those off in Jesus' name. There, there's some things that you've got, and, and it, it just goes back to that. And you're not trying to charm the serpent. You're trying to get it out of your house in Jesus' name. You're trying to get it out of your relationship right now. I see too many people trying to charm the serpent and make it do what. How many of you know snakes bite? Serpents bite. Serpents lie. There's no, I, I just got one for a, a you know, I, I see people. How many of you know? People that have them for a pet, you need to come down the altar right now in Jesus' name. We don't have none of that around here in Jesus' name. Because serpents bite. Don't be surprised. Story about a farmer that saw one out shivering in the cold one time. Out of compassion, he went and put it in his coat after the snake got warmed up. The snake turned around and bit him. He said, I cannot believe that you did that. I saved your life. The serpent looked at him and said, you know who I am. There's some of you today that know who they are. And the devil has been using them long enough. And you're going to have to say in the name of Jesus, you will not use me in your drama anymore. <laughs> You, you will not use me, abuse me, make me do things that I don't want to do because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It says if they drink anything deadly. I want the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in this season not to be paranoid but to be confident. Some of us have went around and we're so paranoid about the election. We're so paranoid about everything. Let me tell you something. I don't care what it is and I don't care what they do. Let me tell you something. God's already given me a promise that if I drink anything deadly, I don't have to be paranoid that he's going to take care of it. Let them talk. Let them say what they want to say. Let them accuse. Let them do. Let me tell you, I don't have to be paranoid because I'm not drinking what they're drinking. I'm not doing what they're doing. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Now notice this. It says lay hands on the sick. But it doesn't tell us to lay down with the sick. Well, I've got to be able to empathize with them. And sympathize with them. And I need to tell them about all of my stuff. How many of you know there's a very select group of people that you need to tell all your stuff to? There's, there's just a select group of people. Why in the world? They didn't like you in high school either. They, they, they never liked you. They, they have never just say, I'm not, I, I can, I, I'm going to pray for you, but I'm not going to lay down with the sick people anymore. <laughs> I've been set free from the addiction. I'm not going to talk about, you remember the good old days when we couldn't even remember what we did on Saturday night? No, that was like good old days. I almost lost my life. But Jesus came and set me free. And if you want me to, I can lay hands on you and you can recover in Jesus' name. That's the power. What keeps us from the power? What keeps us from the power that God wants us to have? What keeps us from the divine purpose that every single person in this room has in their life? The devil, he loves to distract, he loves to accuse, and he loves to bring you in conflict that you think will never end. Now, if you want to get into your purpose... And if you want to have the power to do your purpose, you've got to handle your conflicts. You've got to make up in your mind that I am going to handle this conflict. Any procrastinators in the house, say amen. Anybody that you're putting off, like, you know, you've been putting it off for like, you, you, you put off, putting off, putting off, making a decision about putting it off. 
there, there comes a time that you have to say these words, I am not going to put it off anymore. God, teach me how to deal with this conflict so that I can work in the purpose of God with the power of God. I'm going to give you four things I want you to look at and I want you to see. The first thing is to deal with conflict. You got to start with yourself. Well, they're mean to me. Nah, that's not the issue. Well, you remember they started it again. How many of you know adults sound like five-year-olds most days? Well, they started it. I'm not saying I'm sorry until they say I'm sorry. And, and, you're, and you're losing grace and you're losing mercy and you're just in this cycle over and over again. I've got to start with me. And when I start with me, that shows self-control. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11. A fool, now this is the word of God. A fool vents all his feelings. On social media. Got 2,800 friends. Only two of them really like you. And you're telling them about your relationship. You're telling them about your marriage. You're telling them about your business. It says you are Foolish. Foolish. That's why, let me go ahead and plug this. That's why you need a small group, and I don't want to hear how busy you are. I'm, I'm a little fed up. I'm a little fed up with people that says they want to be free, but they can't take an hour and a half out of their life to become a part of a small group. I don't know if that was me or the Lord, but I'm, we'll just. But I, I'm. I'm we, we can't say that we want to be free if we can't sit down in a Bible study with somebody, drink a cup of coffee with somebody, have a relationship with somebody to say, I need to be free in Jesus' name. I'm tired of going through all these things. We had time about three or four hours yesterday, didn't we? I did too. I'm, no condemnation. We had three or four hours. We had a pregame, you know, cookout. We had all these things. We do everything that we want to do. And we have got to get to the place that we say, I need some people in my life that says these words. I've, I've shared this story before. I have an older brother that we were extremely close growing up. And about four or five years ago, he looked at me at Thanksgiving time. He's, if, he, if he's listening or watching right now, thanks, Anthony. But he looked at me at Thanksgiving time and he said these words that will always be in my memory. Shannon can verify it. My kids can verify it. He looked at me and said, oh, you're fat. Some of you are thinking, well, you know, you had not improved much, but I have a little bit. But I needed somebody to look at me and tell me that that 20-ounce Coke that I was carrying with me all the time was going to ruin my health. And I needed to do something about it. Now that's not, it's not just on a physical level. You need some people in your life to look at you and say, if you keep on going down this path with your marriage, this is what's going to happen to your marriage. If you keep on going down this path with your children, this is what's going to happen with your children. You need some people in your life to look at you and say these words and say, hey, do not let your emotions rule who you are. Greater is he that is in you. Somebody needs to grab a hold of that today. You have the power to overcome in Jesus' name. But a wise man holds them back. Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I, I, I don't tell me your spirit would fill with the spirit if you're speaking in tongues in the sanctuary and cussing everybody out on the outside. 
don't, don't, don't tell me if my anger is always in full bloom that the conflicts. See, we start of lots of our own conflicts, don't we? How many of you have been married over five years? Just kind of wave at me. Ten years? Okay, you've been married? You know how to make them mad, don't you? You do know how to make them mad. You don't have to say nothing. Ride down the road, and when their body faces toward the window, you know they're not looking at the scenery. (laughs) Be mad, but don't let the sun go down on your wrath. You can be upset. It's an emotion. Just like you were happy. Just, just like you were glad that something happened. But then there's a time to, because I am a spirit-filled believer and this is going to cause a conflict if I let it keep on going. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to say, hey, I, I, I messed up or I don't understand or what just happened there. What it needs to go on? You need to resolve the conflict so you can get back on purpose in Jesus' name. Second thing, you need to evaluate your attitude. If I'm going to handle the conflicts in my life, I've got to evaluate my attitude. I've got to evaluate. Now, these first couple of things are going to deal with just you. Why do I feel the way that I feel right now? Did I not get enough sleep? Do I know that I'm in sin? Do I know I haven't picked up the Word of God since last week? Is my worship not where it should be? I've got to evaluate my attitude Because I know for myself, when I'm upset with everybody around me and I have the wrong attitude about everybody, it has to do with me. It may be my sleep. It may be my eat. It may be my devotion life. It may be my worship. I may have got enamored with something on social media that I should not have ever gotten there. And it changed my attitude. I want you to see this. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not that you be not judged. Let me just stop there for just a minute. Sometimes we're tougher on the people that live with us and love us the most than we are on somebody that's at work with us. We will cut more people at slack at work and just say, well, they're having a bad day. You come in and something just not is right at the house, you'll go to yelling and screaming and doing things that you would never do in front of anybody else. Now notice this, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite, you're wearing two faces. And see, if you're wearing two faces, you'll always be in conflict. If there's one way at work and one way at home and one way at church and one way on Saturday night, you will always, I love what Mark Twain said, if you always tell the truth, you never have to worry about what you said. Same way with our living and how we treat people in conflict. If we'll just let our yes be yes and our no be no, we can handle the conflicts that are in our life. First, remove the plank from your own eye, and you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Now, I I want to say this for somebody, because somebody's already done it in the sanctuary today. You've already wanted to text somebody, call somebody, post about something. Pastor said, you cannot judge me. My mother had a bad attitude, so I'm going to have a bad attitude. My father was angry all the time, so I'm going to be angry all the time. Well, I don't like my work. That's why I act like I do at work. That's why I act like the way I do at school. I got to do this. You can't judge me. We have one judge, and he's a righteous judge. But he does tell us this. Go with me to verse 15. Beware of false prophets. And let me tell you that word prophet there. It means having God's perspective on your situation who come to you in sheep's clothing, 
but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their... You'll know them. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but bad trees bear bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Let me, let me, let me just stop there for somebody. It doesn't mean that when the harvest is coming that there won't be seasons that you won't have to do some pruning, some watering, some moments that you have to say, I am not raising my children in confusion in Jesus' name. So whatever our issue is right now, we're not operating in confusion anymore because we're not giving them the example of confusion anymore. I'm not going to go to church in confusion. I'm not going to go to small group in confusion. There's moments that every church in the book of Acts and the book of Revelations that Jesus talks about, there is a moment that he had to look at them and say, you're doing the wrong thing. You've lost your first love. Now get it back right. We're not going to cast you out, but we need you to do some pruning. How many of you know if we'll do some pruning, God won't have to? Well, God, you you just do the work in their life because what you measure out to them is what will be measured to you again. And notice this. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown in the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Now, you're making a decision right now to evaluate my attitude. Don't fuss over nonsense. I hear too many people saying when they evaluate their attitude, well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. How many of you know when you got saved, you're no longer a sinner? I, I, I don't want to mess up your, 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 you know, well, I just struggle, and I just this, and I just that. We all struggle. But how many of you know our struggle is not an excuse for our sin? We know when we're sinning. Maybe that will go over better in 11. We know when we're sinning. We know when we're going against the Word of God. That Holy Spirit within us is trying to say, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. I'm going to say it. You know what you did? You sinned. Well, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. I'm just going to go. I know what everybody else is going to do when I'm, I'm just going to go in fellowship with everybody. No, you know who you are. You're a lush. You know who you are. You'll get into a bad relationship because you don't believe that God can send you a good relationship. You know who you are. You know who you get around a certain amount of people that it will bring you into conflict in your souls. The third thing I want to give you, you got to decide in this conflict either my way or his way. And ask ourselves in this conflict, will God's will be done in my situation? Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Tyler, come help me. Don't Tyler look good today. I love a man that has convictions no matter what happens. <laughs> this is the guy I want the foxhole with me. So, if you and I have conflict, for some of you, this is going to be extremely elementary. But, you know, if we could move on beyond elementary teachings, we could cast out demons in his name. So, we've got a problem. I don't need to go to Noah. I don't need to go to Cain. I don't need to go to anybody else. I need, I need to look at Tyler in the face as a man of God that that's my brother who Jesus Christ died for. <laughs> this is a son of the Most High God. He has been called by God. He's anointed. He can play those drums. Thank God for somebody with rhythm because y'all don't have it. Like me. Thank God. Okay? So I go to him. You know what the scripture says? If him and I make it right, I want a brother. <laughs> See, I'd rather have Tyler. 
I'd rather have Tyler as a brother. See, I need Tyler as a brother. See, the scripture says, now, if that doesn't work, if I did it wrong and Tyler says, I didn't even know you said it, then I'm going to have to bring somebody with me. And Cain's going to come. He's going to be here. This is what's going to happen. We're going to come together. And Cain's going to go, you remember when I messed up? You remember when I said that about Tennessee? <laughs> you remember when I did those things? You remember that? You remember those moments? And then we come together. Doesn't have to go to the third thing that we bring the pastor and the elders into it. Now we're brothers. Now when we pray together, put your hand on my shoulder. Cain, put your hand on my shoulder. Hallelujah. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, I will be right there in the midst of them, and every need of their heart will be done. And God will heal the brokenhearted, and the blind will receive their sight, and the lame will walk, and will cast out demons in His name. The work of grace will be done. And you know what? The glory won't stay here. But for, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And so when Cain goes to school, the Holy Spirit will be there. When Tyler's out on the farm, the Holy Spirit will be there. Because we're in one mind and one accord. And these three people are going to see 3,000, thank you, 3,000 people saved by the power and the grace of God. Because one can put 1,000 to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight. Because the work of grace is being done right now. Because the conflict is over, we were able to work in the purpose of God for our life. And we have power when we went out. And any demon that come against us, any devil that came against us, we knew that I knew Tyler was praying for me. And I knew Cain had my back. And I knew the work of grace was going to be done. Because I wasn't doing this by myself. When I stumbled and fell and I could not get up, I knew Tyler was coming after me. I knew Cain was coming after me. I knew the work of grace is being done. Hallelujah. See, when you understand this and know this, I want the conflict to be over. Because I know there's greater pur purpose when the conflict is over because my battle was not against flesh and blood. But my battle was against an enemy that wanted to steal and kill and destroy. But you know what? When the three of us got together, Jesus gave life and life more abundantly. Fourth thing. The enemy wants you in conflict because he does not want you. I said it, but let me re reiterate it. The enemy does not want you working in your purpose with power. Now, you know what happens to a lot of us? We've gotten so used to the conflict. We've gotten so used to the conflict. We've started showing out. Let me say that again. We believers in 2020 have gotten so used to conflict against the wrong enemy that we would rather make a scene than see the Savior. Huffing, puffing, Seat turned around. I want my children to be saved, but you can't be nice to your spouse. And your children look at you and say, if that's what Christianity is about, I'm out.
Oh, come to church with us. But then we're gossiping about somebody that we know that we're in conflict with. And we would rather make a scene. Let everybody know we're mad. Let everybody know we're upset. Then see the Savior. But when we make up in our minds that we want the conflict to end, everything within us, we can't, we can't, we're not responsible for anybody else's attitude, but we're, we're responsible for our attitude. We're responsible for some self-examination. That God, did I cause this? Did I say this? Now let me show you what will happen when we do what God's called us to do. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. And they went out and preached everywhere. The ones that they said, these uneducated men. Simon Peter with his mouth problems. He just, I'll never deny you. Oh no, I'll deny you all the time. Thomas with his doubting. The two movers and shakers, the sons of thunder. Can we sit on your right and your left? Hey, you know what Judas, you know, you know about Judas, right? He's still in. You know, you know about all those things. But it said they went everywhere, and the Lord working with them. The Lord working with them. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We are his workmanship. We are his poem. We are his song. We are his poetry. He dances over us and the work of grace. The Lord working with them. How many of you know God's still working on us, but we don't have to stay in the conflict in Jesus' name? And confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. 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 Dickie, 2020 is not greater than the God that's in us. He, he's not. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. He's not greater than your marriage problems. He's not greater than the past. And some of you were abused and mistreated and left, and abandoned, but the conflict is over, because you have the peace that passes all understanding to guard your heart and your mind, and I will not let it be a conflict any longer, because I stand on the authority of God's Word that simply says He has a plan for my life, and it's a plan to prosper me, and you may try to keep me in a conflict, but I have purpose, and I don't have time for that any longer, because God's got a plan, God's got a purpose, God's will's going to be done, and I'm going to do whatever it it takes for it to get done and I'm going to walk in power I want you to stand with me this morning online communities if you'll just stay with us isn't it time for the conflict to be over isn't it time for the children of God to say I'm done because I've got a greater purpose than the dysfunction I've got a greater purpose than my past I've got a greater pur purpose than my failure but I need the power of God working in my life and when I'm making up in my mind no matter how much it hurts that I'm walking away you can, you can fight by yourself as long as you want to but I'm through. When we got here, I promise, it's been 10 years ago, Davis was seven years old. We had been in an apartment, a, a condo, and uh, he would ask me almost every week, Dad, can I have a dog? Can I have a dog? 
can I have a dog? And I said, as soon as we get in the house, you can have a dog. And so, Dad calls me one day. He's down at Walmart. And I'm the people that might get the puppies from Walmart, okay? So we picked up those two little mix, Wamaraner kind of, God only knows what they were. One of them had a broke jaw. We got it fixed. I said I'd never do a surgery for a dog, and I did. His fault. But as they got older, they got jealous of each other and got jealous of attention. And so they would come to the wherever they were and they'd start fighting. Well, trying to be good and not let them fight until they really hurt each other, I tried to break them up. But I'm not sticking my hands where they can bite me. Can I get an amen? So I helped get them apart. That's all you need to know about the story. And then the next time, I would go out there, and I would do the same thing. Davis was seven. He would cry because he said, Dad, they're going to kill each other. And they looked like they were going to kill each other, the blood, the whole nine yards. Somebody told me, and they said, I had those kind of dogs. And all they're wanting is your attention. If you'll walk away, they'll stop fighting and follow you. So the third time. I walked away, and all of a sudden, as I was walking up the hill, these two little dogs behind me acted like we were on Lassie together. Homeward bound. These were the perfect pups because I stopped paying attention to their fighting. The conflict was over because we had greater purpose than sitting out in the yard fighting over somebody's attention and when we started walking they stopped fighting if some of you will make a, a moment an act of faith this morning that says God I'm tired of the fight and I make a decision that I'm going to walk closer to you today than I ever have before in my life the conflict that's behind you will be least and the purpose in front of you will be greater than you've ever imagined I want you to bow your head and close your eyes right now is it time is it time for the conflict to be over is it time for the war and the battle to stop and if you believe it's time right now I want you to make one step toward God online I want you to make one step toward God right now and say, I'm ready for it to be over with. I'm ready for it to be over with. And I'm ready to walk in my purpose with the power of God. Heavenly Father, God, I pray in the name that's above every name right now. God, that a work of grace will be done. That they will walk away from the tragedy. They will walk away from the bad relationship. They will walk away from the things that's held them back of walking in their purpose with power. And Father, I pray that right now, by the power and the grace and the mercy of Almighty God, that they will do what you've called them to do. If you want to be free this morning, I want you to lift both hands to heaven. And as surrender, as a surrendered child of God right now, you're saying, I'm walking away from the conflict. I'm giving the situation to you. And I'm letting you do your work of grace in that situation in Jesus' name. Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. You have the power to overcome and you will cast out demons in my name. The serpent will be thrown into the fire that's trying to attach itself to your family and your life. I'm leaving the conflict and I'm walking in purpose in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us at UGC Life Online. We are so encouraged that our services are reaching people all around the world. 
If you gave your heart to God today, or God is doing something amazing in your life, we would love to hear about it. You can text the word UGC Life to 474747 and get connected with us so that we can help you with your next steps. If you would like to contribute to this ministry, go to UGCLife.com and hit the Give button. We appreciate your generosity as we continue to bring healing, hope, and help to our community. Thank you so much for joining us today. We will see you next week.